It's a new year with a new lab. Let me finally show you around. This video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. This is probably the last time this room is ever actually gonna be kinda clean, so I should probably show it to you now. When I say it's a new space, technically that's not true. Originally, when all I needed this space for was some 3D printers and a little bit of robot storage, it was fine. But as we got bigger, as we got Friedrich, as we started to get more robots, this just wasn't enough space. So we knocked down this wall, which was about here, knocked down a closet and a whole nother room, and now we have this entire space to ourselves. Even Friedrich got to help with knocking down one of the walls. We used Freddy in the roller coaster video. I didn't really go through details of the arm itself though. Freddy is a KR150L130 with a KRC2 controller. This generation of robot has a very special place in my heart. This is the generation of robot that I actually learned robotics on. This was the first controller that I ever actually laid hands on. So I know it really, really well. Even with that knowledge, this was an absolute nightmare to set up. Somehow in the process of shipping the robot here, the entire safety board inside of the controller just broke. I had to order a replacement from some used stock in Germany to actually get it up and running. Because of that, I am absolutely terrified to move this. I will never move this robot or that controller more than I have to. Which is exactly why Freddy is staying right here. Also, as kind of a weird quirk of this space, you might notice that the entire floor is actually sloped down. I don't know why this is, but it seems that because of that, the concrete under Freddy is at least 10 inches thick. I've used the longest drill bits I have and I have not been able to find the bottom, which is weird, but fantastic when securing a giant robot to the ground. So it's sort of the ideal spot anyway. This robot is end of life, which means that KUKA doesn't support it. They don't even really have manuals for it anymore because it's that old. It still works and it's still accurate enough for what I do, but you lose out on all of that support if you need it. I have people reaching out all the time asking about older robots that they found used and it really is a crapshoot whether it's gonna work or not. The 3D printing nook isn't all set up yet, but we're working on it. 3D printers have actually become a really essential part of the whole process that we have here. We spend a lot of time integrating and sort of marrying different components together. And usually you need some sort of a me mechanical interface to do that. We don't have a machine shop here or a machinist, but I can design some parts in SolidWorks and 3D print them and really rapidly iterate try new solutions really, really quickly. And these 3D printers are essential for that. I have the A1 and the A1 Mini from Bamboo Labs. These are really handy because you can send prints remotely. There's also the library on the app that you can go through and you can pick from prints that people have already made and sliced. That is actually really, really handy. I also haven't had a ton of problems with the prints failing unless I've set them up incorrectly or there's like a lot of draft since they are open printers they are really susceptible to drafts. That's just a thing with open printers. I also have the Taz Workhorse Plus from Lulzbot. This is also a fantastic printer and it has a bigger bed than the A1. So any sort of larger prints that I need to do, this is a perfect printer for that. And over here in the corner is where we actually keep Frank and Hank. Frank was used in the autonomous Lazy Boy video where we took it off-roading and its little brother was used as the weed killer in the yard. Hank, on the other hand, we've used him a lot. That's why it is so broken and in need of fixing. But we have used it for a lot of projects around here, mostly with the kids. They haven't actually made it into a video yet. The plan in the summer is to see if I can do any really long range autonomy with Hank. So like sending it on missions across town or even across the province.
I often get asked where all this hardware is coming from and why I'm spending so much money on robots. The short answer is I'm not. I own Armory Labs. We help companies either develop their own robots or AI from scratch or integrate robots into their current process. To do that, we often need our own version of the hardware to be able to do the testing and integration. And that's where all of this comes from, is the consulting side of the business. So if you or your company need help with AI or robotics, visit armorylabs.com. Shameless plug. And that brings us to today's sponsor, which is FlexiSpot. A big part of this upgrade, aside from space, was adding functionality. My day-to-day -day changes constantly, and so what I need the space to be changes too. This is the E7 Plus desk and the C7 chair. These two together are perfect for how I work. The two legs on either side of the E7 desk are super strong and motorized, and they're made of automotive grade steel. These can lift anything I really wanna put on the desk, any kind of robot or project that I'm working on, or really unconventional but super attractive loads. It has these super easy controls for remembering and recording predefined heights, which is good because I'm sort of a weird height, so I'll have my heights set from different from other people's. You can even put large moving loads on top of the desk, and the desk barely moves. Normally I would need something really strong like a countertop to be able to handle the loads of an arm like this. The chair is super comfy too. So when I'm not standing at the desk, maybe I'm sitting and doing research, being able to adjust this chair to how I work is perfect. The bottom seat moves in and out, arms up and down. You can change the lumbar and neck support as well. It is supposed to be from five foot seven to six foot nine. So technically this chair is a little big for me, but it's adjustable enough that I can still make it really comfortable. And if you're as hard on hardware as I am, the up to 15 year warranty is a wonderful safety net. If you're looking to upgrade your space with a standing desk or a really comfortable, flexible chair, use my link down in the description and get 50 bucks off. Next up is Stanley. Now, he's normally hanging from this, which you need to hang him to actually turn him on, but for right now, he's sitting in a chair. And that's because he's actually going through a bit of an upgrade. Normally, Stanley has four axes to each arm. There's three in the shoulder and then one for the elbow. But that's actually not enough to do any sort of manipulation. A normal human arm has seven axes to it. You've got one, two, three in the shoulder, four is the elbow, and then you've got five, six, seven, so you got three more on the wrist. That's why he's getting an upgrade of three extra axes for the arm. So you've got an extra one, two, three. Stanley is a normal H1 robot from Unitree. These arm bits actually come from the H12, which is the next version of it. So we're not upgrading the whole thing to an H12, but we are upgrading the lower arm sections. So it's like an H1 and a half. I don't know, it's kind of a weird robot now. Also, we put this head on it, hoping to make it a little less creepy. Some people seem to not really like the normal head that Stanley has. They find it kind of creepy, but I don't actually think that this is really any better. Let me know in the comments what you think of that. The only thing we've had a chance to do with Stanley is dress him up like a Terminator for Halloween, but that is very much beneath what a robot like this can actually do. We do have a lot of projects like reinforcement learning planned for Stanley, so that will be coming eventually. I wanna fill my mini fridge with robot themed beers. This could be beers from a robot themed company like the Good Robot Company out east, or it could be a beer with a specific type like the Robocop beer. If you have any suggestions of good robot themed beer, let me know and they're definitely going in here. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully it sort of explains why my video release cycle is so inconsistent. We got a lot of big stuff planned between now and summer, so make sure to subscribe. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.